Um, thank you for the introduction, and uh, thank you for having me here. Um, I plan to start the presentation with a short video to get you better acquainted with uh, SealTech and what we aspire to. If you could please. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, uh, graphene creates endless possibilities. So what exactly is graphene? And I guess you can ask what is so special about it. Graphene is one atom thick of carbon material. It has been discussed and debated since mid-1800. But it wasn't until 2004 that two scientists in uh, the University of Manchester that managed to isolate uh, or produce graphene for the very first time in their lab. And this discovery earned them the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2010. So again comes the question, what's so important about graphene? Well, first, graphene is the lightest, hardest, and strongest material ever known to human beings. To help you picture maybe this a bit, if you look up graphene, you may come across uh, an illustration similar to the one you see on the screen behind me, where it says that if you take a very thin film of graphene, a bit like the cling film you use in your kitchen, you actually need an elephant standing on a pencil with the sharp tip of the pencil pointing down to create the force needed to break through the thin film of graphene. Now, in anticipation to your question, we have not tested this yet because we're still looking for a pencil that is strong enough to carry the elephant, but I guess you get the idea here. But graphene is not just about muscles, and well, this is where also it gets more interesting. As Anna Jurin mentioned, graphene is transparent, it is flexible and can be stretched up to 25% of its original length without breaking. It can perfectly conduct heat and electricity, even better than silver and copper. It is also impenetrable and can form a perfect barrier to, say, for example, gases. And it's the combination of all these properties that make graphene so unique and so special that Many people call graphene the wonder material. So if we pause for maybe a few seconds, can you think of maybe one or more application that you think can benefit from the unique properties of graphene? Time is up. <laughs> uh, to look at the applications, one of them is batteries. Thanks to the surface area of graphene, and its conductivity, graphene can be used as an additive to increase the energy density of the battery. It is reported, and these are conservative numbers, that you can increase the battery power by up to 10 to 15%. The recharging time is less than a quarter, and the life expectancy of the battery is almost doubled. And what's also important is that the battery becomes much more stable and safer to use. And I actually got this question on day one when I was you know, walking around and getting introduced to people. This is not only restricted to lithium-ion 
ba batteries, although maybe the focus is on lithium ion because they are very popular and high demand. But there's a lot of work on nickel based batteries. There was even a, a work done at Stanford where they used graphene foam on the cathode and used aluminum foil on the anode, and they achieved very interesting uh, numbers and very interesting performance. So then, with better batteries, we can only help accelerate the electrification of the transport sector from cars, buses, ferries, trucks. And we can also provide the energy storage that is required uh, at the heart of what we call today the smart grid or the smart city concept. If you use graphene in solar panels, you can improve the conversion efficiency of the panel by many percentage points. You can also reduce the losses across the power transmission lines with graphene, thanks to its conductivity. Graphene can also be used as a filler material to improve the properties and the performance of almost any structure. I read the other day about uh, graphene application in uh, aluminum matrix, where graphene is used as a reinforcement to improve the hardness and the compressive strength of aluminum. If we take the example of the turbine, you can use graphene in the structure of the blade to achieve stronger blades, yet lighter and more uh, resistant to impact. Graphene can also trap gases, as I mentioned earlier, because of its uh, impenetrable properties. So you can trap and capture hydrogen in fuel cells. And there's also currently studies investigating the use of graphene in capturing CO2 and ca or carbon dioxide. You can also blend graphene in coating to improve the, product uh, the pr sorry, protective properties of the coating. To go back to the example of the uh, turbine, this will make or pr uh, help better protect the, the blades, protect them from erosion, also reduce the friction um, across the surface of the blade. And in the case of offshore uh, turbine, you get also better protection against biofouling. And what applies to offshore wind turbines also applies to ships. You can achieve better protection of the outer surface of the ship and can uh, make the hull much stronger yet lighter, hence requiring less energy and less fuel uh, or less power basically to, to operate. And maybe a slight digression here, but I think a theme that interests all of us. Graphene can also be used in medicine. It is one of the best or the ideal candidate for what is known as targeted therapy, where you can load the surface of graphene with drugs to deliver drugs to specific cells without endangering the surrounding cells. And it's been currently actually tested for cancer treatment. And it showed that you can neutralize the cancer cells without, again, impairing the surrounding cells. So I guess you may be wondering by now, how come you haven't heard about a graphene battery or a graphene screen or, I don't know, a graphene turbine? Well, putting aside the fact that it naturally takes time for any new material to come to the market, for example, because of uh, resistance from incumbent technologies, and pricing strategies, etc. The main challenge that is holding back the graphene industry today is the lack of a viable production method that can produce graphene, uh, sorry, high quality and high volume graphene in a consistent, cost effective, and en energy efficient way. Today's methods, ladies and gentlemen, are either too crude in a way, producing high volume, but low quality or compromised quality graphene, which reduce actually the benefit you get from using graphene in uh, your application. Or at a, maybe a bit better, more refined, can produce better quality graphene, however, at very limited quantities, which cannot meet the market demand. And what's more is that most of today's methods are inconsistent and very power consuming. So this got us at SealTech to start scouring the market and looking for a way to unlock the potential of graphene. And this is where we came across a 
I would say, a very fascinating method that was invented at Caltech, uh, California Institute of Technology, by Dr. David Boyd and his team. And what's fascinating about the method is that it almost ticked all the boxes. It could produce high-quality graphene uh, with, uh, in a consistent way, a fraction of the time and a fraction of the power or the energy requirement. If I may use the term limitation, maybe the only limitation of the method was that it was only a lab scale method, meaning that it could only provide graphene at a lab scale. But never mind this limitation, we were convinced by the potential of this method. And we decided to take on the task to try to find a way to scale up the method and take it from lab to industrial level. And thanks to close collaboration with Caltech and with our third party vendor, I can say that we managed to come up with or devise a method that can potentially tick all the boxes and help producing graphene the way we feel that graphene deserves to be produced. The next slide gives you an idea about the efficiency of the method. The PECVD stands for Plasma Enhanced Chemical Vapor Disposition and is at the backbone of our production method. And here we're comparing it with the standard CVD or chemical vapor disposition and the standard CCVD or the catalytic chemical vapor disposition. I guess the numbers uh, speak for themselves. But basically, you can see the efficiency time-wise and energy-wise of the method that we're using compared to uh, the other method to produce similar quantity or equivalent uh, graphene. Now, the remaining story, I guess we owe much of it to Enova because Enova believed in what we're saying here. They believed in the idea and the innovation uh, we're pushing for and supported us to first secure the rights to use Caltech patent, which is very important, and then helped us also to develop and build our own patent pending graphene production unit, which we call Forza. The unit is self-contained. It is safe and pretty straightforward, I would say, to operate. And it has the potential to, again, produce graphene consistently with high quality, high volume, and in a very energy efficient way. Um, maybe a less sexy photo, I would say, less colorful of the unit here. We're just looking at the outer body of the unit split apart. I'm afraid I can't show you the internals or the pieces that go inside for confidentiality reasons. But as we speak, the unit is about to start the final acceptance test before it got shipped to our facility in Stavanger, where it will go through some fine tuning before we hopefully can start with the production and the supply of graphene in Q3 uh, of this year. In parallel, we're also working on some of the applications I mentioned earlier to you, either as internal projects or as projects with a company like yourselves. And I can say that the results we're seeing are very promising and very encouraging. With this, uh, I conclude my presentation to you. I hope that you found it interesting. I hope you also find graphene interesting to your application. Thanks for having me here, and many thanks to Enova. Thanks again. Yeah. I mean, um, thank